All right, for use substitution, we use this when we're expected to take an antiderivative and our basic rules can't apply because the function is too complicated. So on this first function, I'm going to make my u x cubed plus 5, and I know the derivative of u with respect to x would be 3x squared. I'm going to separate my variables, and I've got 3x squared dx. Notice I don't need a 3x squared dx, but I do need a 1x squared dx. So I'm going to divide through by that 3, and this allows me to then rewrite my integral in simpler terms. Instead of writing an x squared dx, I'm going to replace that with a 1 third du. And instead of writing u x cubed plus 5 to the 6th, I'm going to write u to the 6th. Now this antiderivative seems much more manageable. I know that antiderivative of u to the 6th is u to the 7 over 7 plus c, giving me 1 over 21 times u to the 7th plus c. And I can substitute in my u, which was x cubed plus 5, and that gets me answer e. On 8, they gave me the u that I should use, and they don't even want me to solve the entire integral. They just want me to set it up. So I'm going to have to rewrite all of this in terms of u. So I'm going to first find out well, what is du equal. The derivative of u with respect to x would be cosine of 2x times 2 because of the chain rule. When I separate my variables, I'd have 2 cosine of 2x dx. And do I need a 2 cosine of 2x dx? I only need a cosine of 2x dx. So I'm going to divide that 2 out, and I'd have 1 half du equals cosine of 2x dx. And now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my integral in terms of u. Instead of writing sine of 2x to the fifth, sine of 2x is my u, so I'm going to say I've got u to the fifth. Cosine of 2x dx is going to be replaced with a 1 half du. And again, that's looking like a lot of the setups, b, c, and d, I'm liking how they look. I don't like the negative 2 or the 2 on a and e. So now I've got to take a peek at my bounds. My bounds have to change. These are with respect to x. I need to plug them into my u to get a new bound. So I would say, well, my upper bound was pi over 2. So what's u of pi over 2? I'm going to plug pi over 2 into my u, and I'd get the sine of 2 times pi over 2, which is the sine at pi, which is 0. So where I had a pi over 2, I need to replace it with a 0. So my upper bound needs to be 0. So I'm liking d right now. My lower bound, which was pi over 6, whoops, I'm going to go ahead and say, what is u of pi over 6? That's going to be the sine of 2 times pi over 6. That would leave me with the sine at pi over 3. The sine at pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So my lower bound was pi over 6. It needs to be replaced with the root 3 over 2. I'm digging D. On 17, you might be able to think undoing the chain rule. The chain rule is going to get you an extra 3, but if you're saying, ah, I wouldn't know to divide by 3, let's do u sub. I'm going to make my u that quantity 3x minus 2. The derivative of u would be 3, and I separate my variables and I'd have 3dx. I do not need 3dx, but I do need a dx by itself, so I'm going to divide out that 3. I'm going to go rewrite my integral, and instead of saying 3x minus 2, I'm going to say I've got u to the second. Instead of saying dx, I'm going to replace that with a 1 third du. I'm going to change my bounds. My upper bound used to be 1. I'm going to plug 1 into my u, and I'd get 3 minus 2 is 1. Oh, upper bound actually stays 1. I'm going to plug in my lower bound of u. I'm going to plug that in down there. If I plug in a u, I'm sorry, a 0 in for my x, I'd get negative 2. So my lower bound changes to a negative 2. Let's go ahead and take an antiderivative of u squared. That'd be u cubed over 3. I need to evaluate that from negative 2 to 1. I'm going to simplify this. We really have u cubed over 9 that I'm going to evaluate from negative 2 to 1. I'm going to plug in my upper bound. 1 cubed is 1 ninth minus, whoops, minus negative 2 cubed over 9. 1 ninth minus negative 8 ninths, 
would be 1 9th plus 8 ninths, which would be 9 ninths, which is 1. All right, this next one's pretty complicated, so I'm going to use u sub, and I'm going to make my u 1 minus x squared. Look at that pretty raspberry color. I like that. The derivative of u would be negative 2x. I'm going to separate my variables. Do I need a negative 2x dx? I need a positive 2x dx, so I'm going to go ahead and move that negative over, and I get a 2x dx. I'm going to rewrite my integral, and instead of writing 2x dx, I'm going to sim uh, substitute in a negative du, and instead of writing 1 over that huge square root, I'm just going to have 1 over root u. This is the same as negative integral of u to the negative half. That'll help me. I've got to change my bounds and put them in terms of u. So I'm going to have u with respect to my upper bound, u with respect to my lower bound. When I plug in 1 half to my u, 1 half squared is 1 fourth, 1 minus a fourth is 3 fourths, and 1 minus 0 is 1. So my lower bound is 1, my upper bound is 3 fourths. I could flip them to make them 3 fourths to 1, and what that does is it gets rid of my negative, so it becomes a positive integral. I'm going to do that just so I don't have to deal with that negative. When I go ahead and take that antiderivative, my antiderivative of u to the negative 1 half would become u to the positive half, dividing by half, same as multiplying by 2, from 3 fourths to 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my upper bound. That'd be 2 root 1, which is square root of 1 is 1, so I get 2 minus 2 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. I'd be left with 2 minus 2 root 3 over 2. The 2's cancel, and I'm left with 2 minus root 3. Okay, this antiderivative looks pretty complicated, so let's make a u. I'm going to go ahead and make my u 1 plus sine of theta, because conveniently, the derivative of sine of theta is cosine of theta d theta. And that looks like this good news. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the cosine of theta d theta. That's going to be replaced with the du, and I'm left with 1 over root u. I do need to change my bounds with respect to u. My upper bound of pi over 2, when I plug that into my u, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So I get the upper bound now to be 2. My lower bound was 0, and when I plug that in, we'd get 1 plus 0, which is 1. All right, I'm going to rewrite my u, 1 over root u, as u to the negative half. And I know the antiderivative of that would become u to the positive half times 2 from 1 to 2. I'm going to plug in my upper bound to get 2 root 2 minus 2 root 1. 2 root 2 minus a 2, we could factor out a 2, leaving me with a root 2 minus 1. Answer D. Lots of exponents in this one. I'm going to go ahead and make my u that x to the fourth because the derivative would be 4x cubed, and I need an x cubed, so I'm going to divide out my 4 and get x cubed dx. I'm then going to replace my x cubed dx with a 1 fourth du. I need to compensate for my e to the x to the fourth, but the x to the fourth I'm going to replace with a u. Antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. Whoops, I forgot to change my bounds. So my upper bound was 1. When I plug a 1 into my u function, I'd get 1 to the fourth, which is 1. My lower bound was 0, and when I plug that in, I'd get 0. Oh, so my bounds stay the same. 0 to 1, 0 to 1. I'm now going to plug in my upper bound, and I have 1 fourth e to the first minus, plugging in my lower bound, 1 fourth e to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. So I'd have 1 fourth e minus a fourth, and it looks like they want us to factor out again, and we're left with a. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make my u this denominator of x squared plus 2x. And I thought to do that because the derivative of x squared plus 2x would be 2x plus 2 dx. I don't need a 2x plus 2 dx, but I do need an x plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and, and divide out 2 on both sides. Therefore, I'd get 1 half du equals x plus 1 dx, and that is helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my integrand um, with, instead of saying x plus 1 dx, 
I'm going to replace that with a 1 half du. And therefore, I'd be left with 1 over my u quantity, which was x squared plus 2x. I'm going to change my bounds. My upper bound was 2. When I plug that in to my u function, I'd get 4 plus 4 is 8. So my upper bound is now 8. My lower bound was 1. And when I plug that in, I'm going to get 1 plus 2 is 3. All right, antiderivative of 1 over u is going to be natural log of that u from 3 to 8. When I plug in my upper bound, minus plugging in my lower bound, I am going to get b, and I've kind of written on top of b. I'm going to get b, and all they've done is they've factored out a 1 half and uh, put it in the denominator instead. All right, on this next one, I'm going to go ahead and make my u x cubed minus 1. The derivative of u will be 3x squared dx. I do not need a 3x squared dx, but I do need a 1x squared dx, so I divided out that 3. I'm going to replace my x squared dx with a 1 third du. I'm going to rewrite x squared cubed minus 1 as my u to the 10th. They want us to take that antiderivative. My constant stays out front. My u to the 10th would become u to the 11th over 11 plus a constant. I'm going to substitute back in my u. And I'd be left with 1 third x cubed minus 1 to the 11th. Oops. All over 11 plus c. My th 1 third times my 11th would get me 1 33rd x cubed minus 1 to the 11th plus c. If I put that 33rd underneath, we would be left with d. And finally, we've got ooh, this u sub again. They gave me the u, so I'm going to then apply it. And I'm going to say, well, if u is 2x minus 1, du is going to be 2, and I'm going to separate my variables, dx. When I go to rewrite this, because that's what they're asking me to do, I do not need a 2dx, but I need a 1dx. So I'm going to divide out my 2, and I get 1 half du equals my dx. All right, I'm going to go rewrite my integral. And instead of saying 2x minus 1, I'm going to replace that with a u. So I'm left with g of u. And that looks pretty well aligned with the answers that they've got. And instead of writing my dx, I'm going to replace that with a 1 half and a du. And that's going to cancel out a couple answer options. So we're between b and d. Notice that b has not switched my bounds. And d has put them in terms of u, I'm assuming. Let's go double check them. If my upper bound was 3 and I need to plug that into my u, 2 times 3 is 6 minus 1 is 5. So my upper bound would have to be 5. My lower bound was 2. And when I plug that in, whoop, I'd get 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3. My lower bound is 3. I confirm it's D.